Today I want to talk to you about how to heal sexually from past sex abuse or incest. As always, I'm going to use my favorite book, The Courage to Heal Workbook. Now, this is written by Laura Davis and it's amazing. She also has The Courage to Heal, just the regular book, but this is the workbook and this is what I find to be most helpful in session with my clients to give them some tools and some journal topics and things like that to kind of go on. The topic that I'm going to talk about today is something I get a lot of questions about and that is, I have a partner and I want to be sexually active. I want to have intimacy with this person, but because of my incest or my sexual abuse in my past, I find that to be impossible. And it's really difficult for many of us to, to do this, to have loving sex and a loving sexual relationship with someone when we've had that in our past. Because we are triggered, it can cause us to have flashbacks, we can have like a PTSD-like response, we can have a panic attack, and we have to stop. Oftentimes in the middle of lovemaking, we'll have to say, get off me, get off. You know, we might even have like a complete emotional breakdown where we like freak out and get off of us. And we feel, and the thing, the thing I love about this book is that Laura gives her experience and she talks about how oftentimes she thought that it was her fault and she would feel really broken and like it's, it's all of the baggage that I have and all of the stuff that I carry around that makes it my fault. And finding a sexual partner that's patient, that understands that you can be open with not only emotion, not only physically, but also emotionally, and talk to them about the process. She talks about how important that is to the healing process of this because it's gonna be hard. We're gonna take two steps forward and we're gonna slide back a little. And every time we try, it might not be, you know, the perfect lovemaking experience, but we're getting that much better at it. And having a partner that's understanding and responsive is really key. And I think I want to read a little excerpt from this because she says this and it's such an important point for all of us who've struggled with this to hear and take in. So I want you to really try to listen to this. She says, overcoming shame and accepting myself was at the core of my sexual healing. I had, I had come to the realization that every one of the sexual problems I was experiencing had a certain inner logic. Each one was directly connected to something that had happened to me as a child. The problems I had with sex had been forced on me as surely as the incest. They were not my fault. And I think that's really important. Oftentimes we're made to feel like this struggle and the fact that we might have to stop and start and stop and start is all our fault. But I assure you, it is not. Okay? I want you all to hear that. And now the things that she talks about after this and the kind of the work that we're going to do today is figuring out why we want to work through this. Why do we want to heal? Why do we want to have a loving sexual relationship? And so oftentimes because our past is the incest or the sex abuse that sex was on someone else's agenda. It was put at their time and their pace and whenever they wanted it and we had no say. This is a time when we get to have a say, this is our life. This is what we get to decide when, where, who, how, etc. And the first things that, that within this uh, workbook she asks you to do is completing the following sentences. I want to work on my sexuality right now because, and she gives some prompts, I'm ready. Jackie will leave me if I don't, and you can insert whoever's name into that. I want my body back. I don't want my abuser in my bed or my marriage is at stake. And she says, go back and circle any reasons that indicate your own internal readiness. So you can make a list. Those are just prompts. So start making a list. I want to work on my sexuality right now because. Why do you want to work on it now? And then go back and circle the reasons that indicate your own internal readiness because of you. And then put a star next to those that are based primarily on outside pressures. Like someone will leave me if I don't. I'm afraid that, you know, they'll laugh at me again or who knows what's happening. Now the next prompt, I don't want to work on my sexuality right now because I'm not sure anything will change. I'm afraid of having flashbacks. I'm not ready. Why would we not want to work on it? And then I want you to compare both sets of answers and respond to these following questions. Which set of reasons is more compelling to me and why? Do I feel pressured to heal sexually? 
If so, by whom and why? And does that pressure remind me of the abuse? If so, how? And I think the important part and the reason that I want to talk about this so much is because oftentimes we repeat the pattern. We talk in therapy all the time about recapitulation of past issues. So something may have happened to us, but we're reliving it again today. And the thing that we don't recognize is that we have a choice not to. And as soon as we can recognize that we don't have to have sex on someone else's agenda, it doesn't have to be at their time, it doesn't have to be when they want it. We are in that relationship too, and we have every right to say, you know what, I'm just not ready today, today's a bad day, I had a really triggering day, I'm feeling really down, or whatever it is. And it's, the sooner we can learn to accept that part of ourselves, that what happened to us is not our fault. The hurt and the pain and the scars that we have from surviving it is not our fault. But how we go about healing ourselves from it is something we have control over. And we can be patient with ourselves. We can take those two steps forward and maybe slide back a little, but know that we're on the path to recovery. We're going to heal from this. And so I would encourage if any of you are having this struggle in your relationship, you're worried that your marriage may be at stake or your, your relationship may um, dis, you know, they may break up with you or whatever is happening, if you're worried about that or if you're just trying to work through healing from past sexual abuse and you don't have a partner but it's something that you're working on, I still think that these can be great tools for you to take time to think about. Why do you want to? Why do you want to work on it? Why don't you want to work on it? And then, you know, which set of reasons is more compelling? Why? So take time to think because trust me, I know it's hard, I know it's going to take time, but we can get through this. We're working together, right, towards a healthy mind and a healthy body. And I promise you, if you utilize this workbook, it's an amazing workbook. If you utilize this and at your own pace work through it, you will heal. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I put out different videos all the time, so you make sure you don't want to miss them, right? You don't want to miss different topics. You never know what I'm going to be talking about. And don't forget to like this video. If you want more on this topic, let me know. That's how I rate it, by the likes. And I will keep working with you, putting one foot in front of the other towards a healthy mind and a healthy body. Move forward with our therapist, and then we'll have times where we have a really shitty day, and we, ha you know, we cry and we act out. So know that that will happen and that's normal and that when we struggle so much and we've had such a trauma